What's up everyone? Today I'll be talking about intrauterine insemination. It is an artificial insemination that is used to treat infertility. I'm always talking about IVF, 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 but today I'm going to focus on intrauterine insemination, popularly called IUI. If you're new to my channel, I am Dr. Amarachi Ijama. I am a fertility physician and my channel focuses on everything in fertility and women's health so if this is something you're interested in and you want more content like this please subscribe to my channel like this video and if you have questions drop it in the comment box below stop I'm gonna take a minute of your time to explain who needs to do this procedure so if you fall under any of these categories then this video is for you number one couples that are diagnosed with unexplained infertility so unexplained infertility simply means you and your partner have done all of the standard infertility tests and nothing seems to be the cause of the infertility so i mean the female partner has done all of her tests and she's good the male partner has done all of his tests and he's good but still there's no conception there's no pregnancy this category of people should do IVF and the condition where neither of them have any cause of infertility is usually diagnosed as unexplained infertility so they will benefit from this procedure another set of people that will benefit from this procedure are couples that don't live together some couples don't live together but they want to get pregnant they want to achieve conception maybe one is living in nigeria the other one is living in the u.s or whatever country or even the same country but different states so they don't have regular sexual intercourse but they want to have a baby this procedure is definitely an option for them endometriosis related infertility with endometriosis the problem is usually reduced quality of egg so iui because of the drugs we use to stimulate the ovaries to produce eggs it could help to produce better quality of egg for couples that need donor sperm because for some men they don't produce any sperm cell at all so they need to use a donor sperm to get pregnant a donor sperm is simply a younger man with healthy sperm that will donate his sperm to a couple that is trying to achieve pregnancy so we take the sperm from this younger man and we use for the procedure so in a couple where the man there's a male factor and the man doesn't is not producing sperm or is having erectile dysfunction problem with you know getting erect and actually having sexual intercourse then they would seek they would need to use a donor sperm to get pregnant so for for couples that would need a donor sperm this procedure is for you oh and there's a rare condition where a woman is allergic to her partner's sperm in a situation like this when the partner deposits when he ejaculates inside of the woman the woman produces antibodies that fight against the sperm because she's allergic to it she's reacting to it so her body is seeing the sperm the proteins in the sperm as foreign objects and is trying to fight it off and killing off the sperm so in a situation like this yes you will benefit from iui because then in iui we are bypassing the cervix we are bypassing the vagina we are just going straight into the womb straight into the uterus to the uppermost part of the uterus so that we push the sperm such that it will go into the tubes don't worry i'm still going to explain how the whole procedure for iui works so normally during ovulation the cervix produces a mucus that is friendly so that it it, ha it allows the sperm to pass smoothly to travel from the vagina all the way into the uterus and into the fallopian tubes but in some women this cervical mucus is too thick and it prevents the sperm from actually passing or she has done a procedure in her cervix around her cervix that has caused scarring of her cervix or whatever reason maybe infections that have caused scarring of the cervix and it's almost impossible for the sperm to just swim on its own all the way into the tube all the way into the uh, uterus then this procedure is for you because again we are going to be bypassing the cervix and going all the way going straight into the uterus so for what we are all here for which is the procedure i'm going to start with talking about how many visits you are expected to have when you're doing an iui so minus the consultations the visits where you come for consultations where we do the standard infertility test for you and your spouse or you and your partner 
minus the investigations and all of that when we start the treatment proper you are expected to have about six visits so the first set of visits are usually for the women i mean you can come with your partner for moral support which is really advisable by the way so the first set of visits are usually for the women because this is the period where we are trying to monitor you with an ultrasound scan to know how big your follicles are growing so i'm just going to use like a diagram this is what i literally use to explain to my patients at the clinic so let me just open to the page yeah so for some women we use their natural cycle that is we just use an ultrasound scan to keep monitoring them to know when that biggest follicle is ready to be ruptured so that an egg is released or for some other women we give oral medications like tablets that we use to stimulate the ovaries to produce more follicles so we can get mature eggs that we would use for the um, IUI and then for some other patients we have to use both the oral medications and injectables we use them together to stimulate the woman to get mature follicles and to for the procedure unlike IVF unlike IVF we don't want to stimulate you to have too many follicles i don't know if you can see this we don't want to stimulate you to have too many follicles these are follicles the eggs are swimming the eggs are swimming inside the follicles that's what's happening here but unlike this picture in reality not all follicles contain eggs so the eggs are these gray things that are inside they're suspended inside the follicles the multiple follicles so this is like a picture of ivf that we are not really interested in i'm just using it as an you know to give you like for visualization of what follicles are but in iui this is actually a picture of IUI. In IUI, we are stimulating you to have one or two or three follicles only. We are not interested in multiple follicles like the last picture you saw, like the last diagram you saw. And then by the time you have like follicles that are big enough to be released, then we will give you an we we'll give you an appointment to come and we we'll give you a medication that we use to stimulate your ovaries to stimulate the follicle to release that mature egg and then we invite your male partner or your donor sperm for the next procedure which is the insemination and in the the insemination is is a day case procedure like you come you do it and you go home so it usually lasts between 20 minutes to 30 minutes or even 15 minutes depending on how fast the logistics of the procedure takes so the sperm is usually gotten via masturbation and the man has to uh, masturbate to release the sperm that we are going to use to inseminate that we are going to transfer into the woman's womb for the procedure now remember that we have given the woman a medication to release the egg so the egg is somewhere in the tubes waiting for her sperm to come so we don't just take the sperm that the man has masturbated and ejaculated and then transfer no that's not what we do what we have to do is we have to wash the sperm the reason we are washing the sperm is because the semen contains non-sperm materials that can that the woman can react to that can you know prevent fertilization so what we want to do is we want to wash out all the non-viable sperm wash out the non-sperm materials and then separate the high quality most viable sperm cells from the low quality ones then by the time we are done washing properly we take this sperm the best ones and then we take a catheter it's like a rubber tube very flexible slim rubber tube and then the embryologist the scientist puts the washed sperm inside that tube so what we do is we tell the woman she lies down on her back on the exam on the uh, operation table on the procedure bed rather and then she puts her leg she flexes her knees on the bed such that you know we can have access to her vagina then we use a, a, a an equipment 
a, an instrument called the speculum and we insert the speculum gently that says after cleaning the vulva area we insert the speculum gently into the woman and then we clean inside again because i mean cleaning is very important in this procedure in all of these things no pain no pain at all she, the woman doesn't require any sedative she doesn't require any uh, uh analgesic because it's actually a non-painful procedure and then when the uh embryologist the scientist gives us the catheter we transfer smoothly into so what we do is we we take the catheter and we pass it through the vagina into the cervix all the way to the topmost part of the womb you know you know how the womb looks okay this is a perfect mm, a perfect illustration so this is the catheter so the catheter goes all the way up we we try to ensure that it gets really really high so that we can push the sperm all the way into the tube so did you see how this just bypasses every other thing and just goes all the way up and swims its way into the tube to where the egg is to fertilize the egg and kaboom fertilization occurs after the procedure you are expected to rest on the bed for a brief period of time after which you are expected to go home continue your daily activity eat your normal food have fun laugh joke go to work yes as much as possible we don't want you to do any extra extra activity you know because we want you to rest as much as you can but at the same time activities continue but nothing to strain us in two weeks you are expected to do your pregnancy test and when the pregnancy test is done if it comes out positive then kudos 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 that's the end of your journey but if it comes out negative then you'll be advised to try again or maybe do ivf try not to do the pregnancy test before two weeks because it could give you a false negative result it could give you and this could give you anxiety and make you stop taking your medications you know because we're going to actually put your medications after the transfer that will help you know with the luteal phase of the procedure so bear in mind before you actually do the procedure it's not a hundred percent successful but as fertility physicians and fertility clinics we do our best to ensure that you know you get pregnant and with that we've come to the end of today's topic i hope you found it really informative please don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video drop your comments below and see you in my next video